Welcome back to Random Maths Inc. And today we're going to be talking about something called dynamic programming. So let's get right into it. In one very brief sentence, the whole idea of dynamic programming is for us not to repeat the work that we have already done before. The way to prevent this from happening is by making sure that once we have calculated some certain value that we might use again in the future, we store it somewhere so that when we want to use it again, we can just pull it out from the list, for example, rather than having to calculate it over and over and over again in order for us to save time. And the way that I'm going to show you how dynamic programming works and for you to get a better idea of what it is, we're going to jump in and do a certain example of dynamic programming, using it to do some certain task and write some algorithms. And the example I'm going to start with is the example of trying to find what we call Lucas numbers. Now, before we even start to write a piece of code to find us the Lucas numbers, we first have to understand what the Lucas numbers even are in the first place, right? Because we don't know what Lucas numbers are, there's no point of even trying to explain the code. So what better ways are there to explain the Lucas numbers than to just open up the Wikipedia page for Lucas numbers and then go from there. So according to Wikipedia, the Lucas numbers are defined by the following. If I, if I zoom in to my super high-tech um, piece of information here, now the way that the Lucas numbers are defined is said to be defined recursively in the sense that the actual way that we define the Lucas numbers involve us using the definition of Lucas numbers itself, but for smaller cases. The way that we define Lucas numbers is the following. We first say that the first term is 2. We say that the zeroth Lucas number, when n equals to 0, we get the number 2 out. If we have our n equal to 1, or the first Lucas number, then we have the number 1. And for any other Lucas number beyond this, it is the previous two Lucas numbers added together. As you can see here, it is written as ln equals to ln minus 1 plus ln minus 2 for any n greater than 1. And so as an example of the Lucas numbers, the first few Lucas numbers look like this. It starts with 2 and then with 1 according to these definitions and then we have 3 which is just these two added together then 4 which is these two added together and then 7 which is these two added together and so on and so on four. So really it's really similar to how the Fibonacci number are defined and I, I could probably use Fibonacci numbers to just as an example of my dynamic programming but you know Fibonacci numbers are boring and everybody's probably gonna be using that so I, I, I guess let's 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 do a different example and what I want to do now is to write out a piece of code write out some algorithms that will help us find the Lucas numbers any certain Lucas number that we want specifically what I want is a certain function looking like this. And this function will take in one parameter, which is the number n. And what we want this function to give out is to give out the nth Lucas number. For example, if I let n equal to five and I call on this function, what I want it to give out is to give out the fifth Lucas number. And so in order to implement this function, I will get my laptop out and we're gonna do some actual coding. And so for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be coding in a language called Python. Why Python? Because Python is so cute. It's like your little brother. It's really easy to understand and the code's really easy to write. And Python's amazing, except for the fact that, you know, it doesn't have types, the classes can't be private, and it's really freaking slow. It doesn't have really like the advanced data structures. But you know what? For the purpose of this video, it, it's good enough. So we're gonna try to write the function that calculates the Lucas numbers in Python. So the way I'm gonna define functions in Python is by writing def. And we're gonna call this function Lucas, which takes in one single parameter, and that's gonna be n, which is the Lucas number that we want. If n equals zero, it just gives out the zeroth Lucas number. If this n is five, it gives out the fifth Lucas number, and you know the drill. The way that I'm gonna write this code will be very, very similar to the way that the Lucas numbers were defined from earlier. Now, the way the Lucas numbers were defined, or at least it was according to Wikipedia, is through three different cases, when n equals to zero, when n equals to one, and when n is any other number greater than one. And so the way we're gonna write the code is to simply break it down to three cases, very, very similar to the definition. So first we have to check whether our number is in fact zero. So I'm gonna say that 
if n does equal to zero, then the function should just give out the number two because the zero of Luke's number is just two. So we're going to say it returns the number two like this. Now we can check for the next case. We have to check if n equals to one. So we simply say else if or in Python elif n equal to one, then the first Lucas number will just be the number one. And so this function should return one, like so. Now we have the rest of the case for any other number. And the way we can indicate this is by saying else, which means that if n is any other number that is not zero and is not one, and if n is any other number other than this, we're just gonna give out the answer as the sum of the previous two Lucas numbers. Now in computer science we have a very very neat trick called recursion which allows you to do the following. We can simply say that we want to return Lucas of n minus 1 plus Lucas of n minus 2. As you can see here I've pulled a little sneaky on you by simply calling the function which is actually the function I'm writing out itself. As you can see here, I'm calling on the function Lucas, even though I'm actually writing out what Lucas is. This is a trick called recursion, and it actually works. And the reason that it works is because if you think about it, when I call Lucas for n, it's gonna call on Lucas for n minus one, and then that Lucas for n minus one is gonna call on Lucas for n minus two, and so on, and eventually you keep going down, eventually you're gonna to get to the case when n equals to one or n equals to zero. And when you get to either n equals to zero or n equals to one, the function Lucas doesn't call itself over and over again, it just gives out a straight answer. And that's when the loop, the recursion, sort of stops. And so, trust me, this works. And now, if I try to call on Lucas, for example, with the case that n equals to zero, it gives out a straight answer, it gives out a two. If I want to work out the Lucas numbers for n equals to five, for example, again, it gives out a straight answer. But more importantly, if I want to work out the 50th Lucas number, and more importantly, if I want to find how long this takes, I'm going to write um, percent sign time in front of it to work out how long it takes. <sighs> This takes a little bit longer than I expected. You know what? The code just takes way too long. I, I, I've been waiting for this for maybe like a good, like maybe 10 minutes or so, and I, and it's still not coming out. And um, I, I guess Python is in fact a slow language, but also because this function is actually itself really slow. So now the question I wanna ask is why does our original function take such a long time to compute the Lucas numbers. Well, here's one way I can demonstrate why it is so. I'm going to draw some sort of a tree, and this tree will represent the functions that needs to be called when, well, I call a certain function. You'll, you'll see what I mean. So let's give an example. Let's suppose I want to call the function Lucas 5 to find the fifth Lucas number, right? So the question is what function needs to be called when I'm calling Lucas 5, when I want to find the fifth Lucas number? Well, at the top here, I'm obviously going to have to call Lucas 5 itself to start the entire shit. Now, let's think back to the code. The code for finding the Lucas numbers requires us to find the previous two Lucas numbers, right? So if I have Lucas 5, Lucas 5 itself is going to have to call the previous two Lucas numbers. So Lucas 5 is going to have to call Lucas 4 to find the fourth Lucas number, and it's going to have to call Lucas 3 to find the third Lucas number, the two previous Lucas numbers. 
but Lucas 4 itself also has to call another function, right? Because Lucas 4, in order to find the fourth Lucas number, we have to find the third Lucas number and then the second Lucas number. Because now when we get the second and third Lucas number, we can add them together to get the fourth Lucas number. But again, the third Lucas number also has to call a different function, and those functions will be Lucas of 2 and Lucas of 1. Right. And um, again, Lucas 2 will have to call on another function, which is Lucas 1 and Lucas of 0. But the thing is, when Lucas 2 is called and it calls on Lucas 1 and Lucas 0, um, this tree doesn't grow any further because we know Lucas 1 is just going to return 1 and Lucas 0 is just going to return 2. The answer sort of stops there, right? So to show that, I'm going to draw a box around it like this, right? So this is where the answer sort of stops. It doesn't go any further. Same here. When Lucas 3 calls on Lucas 1, Lucas 1 doesn't call anyone any further. So that's where the tree sort of stops. So there we have a tree, sort of a very simple tree that shows what function is called when we want to find the fifth Lucas number. But as you can see here, you might already be able to spot some of the problems because there is actually a lot of overlapping that is caused. For example, here, um, when you find the fifth Lucas number, we have to find the third Lucas number as well. But again, here, when we're finding the fourth Lucas number, we also have to find the third Lucas number there again. So there's overlap within our problem itself. And the third Lucas number turns out to be pretty, well, pretty time consuming to find because when to find the third Lucas number, we have to do all this work down here, right? Same with on this side, it has to do all this bit of work down here. I'm not sure if you can see the yellow, but it, there is a lot of work that needs to be done down here. Similar to the second Lucas number, when we call the second Lucas number, there is still a bit of work that has to be done. But the important, more importantly, is that Lucas number, the second Lucas number is called way, way many times. I should really change color for that. And so the problem gets even worse when you get to bigger and bigger trees. When you wanted to calculate Lucas 50, the number of, for example, Lucas 3 that I might have to find will grow even quicker. And so now there is a problem. It becomes really time consuming. We have to find everything, the answer to everything over and over and over again. And so what we really need to do is to try to not repeat these sorts of calculations in our code. So from that analysis, you can see that writing the recursion straight up like this actually isn't really that good because it's really, really slow. And so in order for us to be able to solve this, we should use some dynamic programming. And so now that you've seen a little bit of a setup of the problem that we're gonna be dealing with, we're gonna to try to use dynamic programming principles to make sure that our code runs a lot faster. And so the way I can do so is by making sure I don't call the same bit of code over and over and over again and work out the answers of it over and over and over again. If we look back at the tree that we have, um, as you can see here, I calculated Lucas 3 in two places, for example. Um, so what I can do to reduce the time is when I calculate Lucas 3 in one place, I keep the answer there and then reuse it when I call Lucas 3 again, rather than going through the whole process of calculating Lucas 3 over again. And that's going to save a lot of time. And that's the whole idea of dynamic programming. To understand why dynamic programming will actually help us reducing the time to solving the problems of finding Lucas numbers, we can note two very key characteristics about this particular problem. The first characteristic that we have in this problem is that a particular problem that we have has got sub-problems. If I want to find the fifth Lucas number, I have to find the fourth Lucas number and the third Lucas number. If I want to find the fourth Lucas number, I have to find the third Lucas number and the second Lucas number. As you can see, if I want to find a certain Lucas number, there are smaller and smaller subproblems that I have to deal with first. Some of the smaller subproblems, some of the smaller Lucas numbers I have to find before I can find the big Lucas number. And it's also important to note that when we have a problem that has got these sort of subproblems, usually we can solve it using some sort of a recursion solution. In this case, I've already demonstrated that finding Lucas numbers can be written out as some sort of a recursion problem, as we've seen about five minutes ago or something. Now, the second characteristic that we have is that the problems that we have must involve subproblems which are overlapping. What I mean by this is that we have got subproblems that you might have to find a couple of times. So in this case, as I've demonstrated, 
if I want to find the Lucas numbers, for example, the fifth Lucas number, I'm going to have to find the third Lucas number a couple of times and the second Lucas numbers a couple of times as well and so on. Now, the reason that this second point is also important is because if your subproblems that you have is not overlapping, then there's really no point of keeping the answers of previous calculations before because if the problem is not overlapping, then there's really no point of reusing the answers that you have. But instead, if for this case, we have problems that the answers will come up again and again, the same subproblems will come up again and again, it makes sense to keep the answers so that you don't have to do this same calculations over and over again. And so to recap, subproblems and overlapping subproblems are important characteristics for us to be able to use dynamic programming. And in this problem, in Lucas numbers finding, we can definitely use it because it has got these two characteristics that I've mentioned. And so now that you've seen a setup of a problem and you've seen the problem um, of the way that we approach the problem, we're gonna to try to reduce the amount of time it takes for us to find the Lucas numbers by using a bit of dynamic programming, some simple dynamic programming sample. Now it turns out if I were to tell you to find Lucas numbers by hand, you would actually go through repeating all the calculations over and over and over again. And that's sort of an idea that we can use in dynamic programming. That's sort of a very similar idea that we're not trying to repeat the calculations over and over again. Because if we were to do it, we definitely wouldn't be doing that. And so how would we exactly be reusing the answers over and over again? Well, there's two key ways that we can do so. The first way is we can work from the bottom upwards, right? So if, for example, I want to find the fifth Lucas number, what I can do first is I can find the first Lucas number and the second Lucas number and the third Lucas number and the fourth Lucas number and then the fifth Lucas number. And yet, we can work it up all the way as like a ladder step. There's also another way though, which is we can start from the top, work our way down and only find the answers when we really need them. So as an example again, when we find the fifth Lucas number, we need to find the fourth Lucas number and the third Lucas number. So we can go through the process of finding the fourth Lucas number and the third Lucas number. But every time we find these new answers, we keep them somewhere. And not surprisingly, these two approaches have got very simple names. They're called bottom up and top down. And they tend out to be the approach that we probably would take if we were to find the Lucas numbers in real life. And so really dynamic programming isn't just a technique out of nowhere, it's an approach that's probably inspired by human thinking. And so let's take a look at how we would go about approaching solving the Lucas numbers and optimizing our code so that it's a lot faster using some of these approaches to dynamic programming. And as an arbitrary choice, I am going to use the bottom up approach for this demonstration. So what I'm going to try to do in this implementation is I'm going to try to work my way from the bottom all the way up. So rather than trying to work out the nth Lucas number directly, I'm first going to start by working out the zeroth Lucas number, and then work out the first Lucas number, and then the second Lucas number, and then keep going all the way up until I get to the nth Lucas number. And by building up the answers slowly like this, I know that all the previous answers that will be needed in future calculations will have already been calculated and stored in a list somewhere. And so I can just simply pull the answer out and not having to calculate those numbers over and over and over again, which is the technique we use in dynamic programming to save time. And so let's get right into it. First, again, we're gonna to have to define a function. And again, this function is gonna be called Lucas and it's gonna take in one parameter which is again n, which is which Lucas number do you want? There is a line up there where I'm importing NumPy, just ignore that. Um, it's because I just have, I'm gonna use a package and I have to use something from that package. So first what I have to come up with is I have to come up with an array where we're gonna store the Lucas numbers inside. So I'm gonna call this the Lucas storage as such. And what Lucas storage is going to be, it's just gonna be a blank array, an array of a certain size, an array of size of n plus 1, where I can store each of the Lucas numbers from 0 all the way up to n. So the way I'm going to do this is by saying that I want Lucas storage to be np.zeros, um, which is going to have a length of n plus 1, and I'm just going to say int here because I want all the numbers stored in here to just be an integer. The n plus 1 because the array is going to be of size n plus 1. Remember, we have to store the 0th Lucas number all the way to the nth Lucas number, which is n plus 1 numbers in total. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work out each of the Lucas numbers from the 0th Lucas numbers 
all the way up to the nth Lucas number. And the way you can do so is by using something called a for loop. And the way we do for loop is by saying for i in um, range of n plus 1. What the for loop does is every bit of the code that follows the for loop, we're going to do that piece of code over and over and over again. But every time that piece of code sees the variable i, it's going to replace the i with one of the numbers in the range. This range of n plus 1 is just a list of numbers from 0 all the way to n. As you can see here, um, the range doesn't include the number we enter here itself. So it's a list from 0 all the way to n plus 1 exclusive. And so the for loop, it's going to keep doing this loop over and over again. But the first time it's going to let i equal to 0, then it's going to let i equal to 1, and then to 2, and then all the way to i equals to n. And you're going to see what I mean as I write the code out. So the for loop here is going to calculate the ith Lucas number in order. And the way we calculate the Lucas number is going to be the exact same that we have before, using the same recurrence relation that we have before. And so we're just going to define it. There are three cases that we have to deal with. The first case is when i equals to zero. We want the zeroth Lucas number. So I'm going to write if i equal to zero for the zeroth Lucas number, then we're going to say that the ith Lucas number is just simply equal to two, which is how we define the zeroth Lucas number. Then we have the next case when i equal to one. And the ith Lucas number is just going to be equal to one by definition. Now, if i is not equal to 0, i is not equal to 1, we want to work out the other Lucas numbers, then we just say else, we want the, then the i Lucas number will just be the sum of the previous two Lucas numbers. But we know that the previous two Lucas numbers are already going to be in our storage, because sometime before we get to this loop, that number should have already been found, which means I can just call the answers for the previous two Lucas numbers directly from my Lucas storage. And so I can just simply say that i Lucas number will be Lucas storage in position of i minus 1, or the i minus 1 Lucas number, plus Lucas storage in the position of i minus 2, which is the i minus 2 Lucas number, the previous two Lucas numbers added together as such. And here's the key parts of the code, is that I'm not working out the answers over again, I'm just simply using the answer that we already have kept in our storage. And so by this point, we're going to have the ith Lucas number ready. And the last thing we have to do is we have to make sure that this ith Lucas number gets put back into our storage for future use. So I'm just going to say Lucas storage in the position of i will be equal to ith Lucas number. I can't really spell anymore. And so now, after we have done all this, after all of the loop, we're going to have all the Lucas numbers filled in our Lucas storage, including the nth Lucas number that we want to find. And so in order for us to find that, we can just simply pull out the nth place in Lucas storage and return that out as an answer. So we're just simply going to end this um, function with return nth um, Lucas storage in the end position. And so all our code have done is we have worked out each of the Lucas numbers one by one in um, the for loop here and then keep putting that answer back into our storage and then at the end we just call on the answer that we really want. And that is a finished function and we can check that it also works. If I call Lucas of 0 we get 2. I call on Lucas of 5 we're gonna get 11, which is the fifth Lucas number, but more importantly, um, if I want to find the 50th Lucas number and also time how long it takes, it's almost instant. I didn't have to wait minutes for it. Now, you can go on the internet and try to verify for yourself that the number that I got out is indeed the 50th Lucas number. Um, I won't uh, do that bit for you, but more importantly, the part that you can see is that our code actually runs a lot quicker than the code I've shown you before. It actually runs in less than a second compared to the other code which took like an entire 10 minutes and even more and I didn't even try to find how long it takes. Now, the approach you've seen so far is 
the bottom up approach where we start finding the zeroth Lucas number and work all the way up to the Lucas number that we need. There's also the top down approach, which I won't be talking about in this video, but I'll link it to um, my second channel where I'll try to walk through how I would use the top down approach in order to work out the Lucas numbers as well. Now, this is a very simple example of dynamic programming. I guess you don't even probably don't even need dynamic programming to do a simple task like this although it does help with optimizing time um, there are other examples of more interesting problems that you might want to use dynamic programming some of those problems you might be able to see in optimization problems where you're trying to work out what are the best moves in order to maximize a certain task um, one example is something called the rod cutting problem, trying to maximize the profit when you're cutting pieces of rod. I'll link you to it in the description where I'm going to try to walk through that example as well because I don't really want to put in this video, it's already about almost half an hour long. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video on a very last remark before we even go as well. Uh, I, re I recently discovered that my channel is currently at 2,000 subscribers which is um, pretty cool uh, and uh, I guess... Thanks everybody for subscribing to my channel even though I've been very very inconsistent. I think the last time I uploaded a video was probably at least like five, six months ago or something. I I'm not even sure. But yeah, thank you very much for all your support even if I'm being inconsistent. I hope you're enjoying these sorts of videos. Uh, I have a couple of video ideas coming up. I have about a week before I have to go do my internship so hopefully I can get a video out or something by that time but yeah i uh, thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again in a bit